What is up insaners and welcome to another video of the Fantasy Premier League 2022-23 season. In this one guys, we're gonna talk about some of the best options to buy and sell for Game Week 5. We'll also cover why you should wildcard Game Week 5 and a potential draft as well. Then we'll look at our teams, our transfer strategies and we'll end the video with the best captaincy options for Game Week 5. So lots to cover in this one guys. Hit like, hit subscribe and let's get into the video. Now talking about some of the best players or some of the best options to first kind of sell this week. I think if you have Arsenal players like a Bukayo Saka or even Zinchenko who might be injured guys. So if you have these options in your FPL team, I think they are worth selling this game week. I know it's a fixture against Villa. Villa haven't really looked that great in defence. I mean they are conceding goals. Gerard is kind of struggling to take care of that team. So there are chances that Arsenal might keep a clean sheet. They might even score. 2-3, maybe even more goals. But I think Bukayo Saka is not the right FPL option, guys. Martinelli is a much better option to go for. If you want to downgrade, you can go for Martinelli. If you're looking for a certain replacement, a similar replacement, I think, in one of the best options to buy this week, we have Luis Diaz, guys, who's playing for Liverpool. He is quite attacking. We know that he scored a brace. Yeah, I was maybe a bit lucky to get those two goals. But I think he still played really, really well. He's playing a lot more central in that Liverpool lineup, guys. And that might change when we see Nunes coming into the frame, coming into the setup. But I still feel Luis Diaz is a great option to go for, guys. So if you want to sell Saka, get in Luis Diaz. If you want to sell Saka and kind of save money and go even cheaper, guys, there are some options in a Pascal Gross from Brighton. I think he's been doing really well. We know that he's a great FPL asset now because he's done it consistently over a few weeks. And I think he's a great cheap budget enabled to kind of go for. Of course, he's not very, very cheap, like a 4.5 million option. But he still gives you a lot of money, guys, and you can invest that money elsewhere. You can even get him for Leon Bailey in your team, guys. Let's say if you have Leon Bailey, and if you have some additional money in the bank, guys, you can easily get to a Pascal Gross. I think it's a great option to go for. Now, let's say if you are targeting replacing a Zinchenko, for example, I think there are options. There are some couple of defenders who are really good this week. We have one in William Saliba, guys. So if you have that additional transfer in hand and if you don't have anything else to do, guys, I think it's worth the downgrade. I think Saliba will be a part of the Arsenal defence, guys. We've been seeing that he's been doing well. He can even score a goal. Maybe he's a threat from set pieces as well. So I think he will be a nailed option in the Arsenal defence, guys. So if you are looking at a cheap option from a premium defence, I think Saliba is the one to go for, guys. Now, in case if you are looking at only a 4.5 million option, let's say if you just have 4.5 million for some reason, I think another player that you can bring in this week is Lewis Dung, guys. He's playing for Brighton, who are a tight defence. We know that they can keep clean sheets. We also know that Lewis Dung has some goal threat from set pieces. So I think if you're looking for a cheaper option, if you're not looking to spend a lot of money, I think Lewis Dunk is a great option to go for, guys. We know that he's nailed in that Brighton defence and he's that leader in the defence, guys. So there are potential points up for grabs, guys. And I think he's a great option to go for. Now, coming to the next section of this video, guys, we're talking about a wildcard. Now, why you should wildcard in Game Week 5? Let's say if you are missing a few potential, high potential FPL players who can give you points, I think there's enough reason for you to wildcard. I understand that the wildcard team might not be very different from the popular players or from the template picks that are existing in the FPL game right now, guys. But again, if you don't have those popular picks, if you have gone very differential and it's kind of gotten wrong, I think there is a chance to rectify this. You can go for a wild card. Yes, you can do a bit of changing in structure in terms of, let's say, going for a three up top or maybe, let's say, going for a four or five in midfield. I think these are certain changes that you can do because a lot of people have big at the back defenders. They have premium defenders. So if you, let's say, for some reason, if you want to change that, you can absolutely do that with a wild card. Now, looking at a draft, guys, I think it's a pretty much solid draft for a wild card. We have the likes of Trent. We have the likes of James. Now, instead of Kinsella, we've gone for Walker because we've saved some money. And I'll tell you exactly in a minute why have we done that. We also have Saliba, who I mentioned, is a great option to go for. Now, in this draft, I don't have any money in the bank, as you can see. So, I've gone for Raya. In case of Raya, in place of Raya, in fact, if you have some additional money, I think you can easily go for Sanchez, who's a slightly better keeper option to go for. I understand that Raya can make a lot of saves and he still would get FPL points. Maybe a clean sheet here and there, but I just feel... Sanchez has a higher potential, has higher points potential in terms of clean sheets, etc. as well. So I think he's the best option to go for in that 4.5-ish, 4.6 million category. Now we also have Nico Williams as a cheap option who's been starting for Forest. He's been quite attacking. We know that he can get an attacking return. I still don't understand or I still don't feel that 
Forest will get clean sheets, but I think there is a potential for attack and returns with a Nico Williams. In case if you want to go cheaper or I mean if for a different player, you can also go for Patterson from Everton, but he's not any better in any case, I think. There's also Emerson from West Ham. So if you are looking at a different option and when West Ham have decent fixtures, maybe, or if you just want a cheap bench option, I think Emerson, if he starts regular games, I think at 4 million, he could also be good. Now we've gone for Salah, we've retained Salah because we don't see any reason of not having him in this wildcard draft, guys. We've gone for Martinelli, who's also a great option. Then we've gone for Luis Diaz, who again, as I mentioned earlier, is a great replacement for players like a Mount or a Saka, for example. So I think these are solid three players, which a lot of teams have. Of course, there's not a huge advantage with going in terms of going with these players, but I think you can easily go for these three. I think they're the best trio or the best midfield options to kind of go for. Then we've gone for Pascal Gross. A lot of people would have Rodrigo here, but I just feel Pascal Gross for the value that he's at because of the money that I had in this draft, guys. I can or I could only afford a Pascal Gross. But if you can probably get to a Rodrigo, that's also a good option to go for. I mean, it's not really a lot to choose from between the two because Pascal Gross has done really well. Of course, he's not on penalties. We also don't know if Rodrigo is on penalties. So I think they're pretty much decent. They're pretty much good options to go for depending on how much money you, uh, you have or you know if you want to save some money, Pascal Gross is pretty decent. Then we have Pereira here, I think, who's the best 4.5 million option to kind of go for in midfield. He's starting games, he's playing quite attacking. There is assist potential as well. So I think you can even start Pereira for the easier games. Then up top, I think this is where things get very interesting because we've gone for Jesus, Haaland and Tony guys. A lot of people are going for only Jesus and Haaland, which is absolutely fine. But on a wildcard, there is that advantage to get in a Tony. And that's the reason we've kind of gone for Walker here guys, because we've saved that additional money. And rather than having a 4.5 million striker, We've taken that money and put it into Tony, guys. I think Tony has the potential to score Cancelo. I mean, if Cancelo doesn't really get you attacking returns and if Man City maybe don't keep a clean sheet in every game, there's an absolute potential for a Tony to, you know, kind of score goals, get you FPL points. He's not a kind of a player who will probably give you about 15, 20 points, maybe week on week. But there is that 7 to 8 point points potential, guys. So you can absolutely go for that. Now, in case if you're not satisfied with Tony, if you feel that he's maybe not a great option to go for, then you can always downgrade to two strikers, put that additional money in a Cancelo if you're not convinced about Walker. And there's also an option to kind of invest that additional money and upgrade maybe a Pascal Gross, for example. I mean, you can even go for a City midfielder. Let's say if I'm targeting a different option in midfield, maybe a slightly more premium option in midfield, than a gross, for example, you can absolutely go for Gundogan, guys. There's a minutes risk, there is a slight risk of rotation there. But I think if you are looking at a Man City midfielder right now, guys, it has to be Gundogan. I mean, there is definite goal threat in him. We will get goals, he will make those runs. We can even go for Foden or a Bernardo Silva. I mean, you can absolutely make a case for both of them. But getting or guessing their uh, attacking returns is very, very difficult at the moment right now, guys. Yes, they will probably get more minutes than a Gundogan, but I still feel there is more point scoring potential in a pick like Gunungan. Now quickly coming to our Game Week 5 team guys. It's a pretty straightforward team. We have Raya in goal, James Trent, Kinsello, Gabriel. All decent options to go for. All have good fixtures this week. Yes, there could be some potential for some rotation. Maybe James, maybe Kinsello. But I still feel both Chelsea and Man City need wins guys. And I think they will definitely play. Maybe not the whole game, but I still feel they have a potential to maybe play at least more than 60 minutes. So I'm pretty confident and sorted there. Then in midfield, guys, I have Martinelli, Salah and Rodrigo. Pretty happy with the midfield. Right now, my captaincy is on Salah. And I know a lot of people might be a little bit scared in terms of captaining Salah, considering that he blanked last week when Liverpool scored nine goals. But I think he's still a great option to go for. Yes, Newcastle is not going to be a straightforward and an easy game. But I still feel Newcastle away and a home game for Liverpool. I think there is potential for Liverpool to do well, guys. Salah was definitely a lot unlucky or a bit unlucky, in fact, to not get any attacking returns in the last game because he had great numbers. He was the most involved player on the pitch. And I generally feel hard done by. I mean, it was very, very unlucky and it's not going to happen every week. So I'm still back in kind of Salah. Of course, you can uh, go for different options. And we'll talk about different captaincy options just in a bit. Then in, in terms of our forward line, we have Haaland, Tony and Jesus guys. Pretty much decent. I mean, both couple of template picks in there. Tony is a great option to go for. Crystal Palace is not going to be an easy game, especially Crystal Palace at home is not going to be easy. But I think Tony still has the potential to score. We know that he will be involved in attacks. We know that he can create chances. He's also on penalty. So there are a lot of 
potential chances of you know scoring FPL points. I pretty much like it. We have Bailey Pereira and Williams on the bench, guys. Bailey's kind of becoming a problem because I want to take him out because he is decreasing in price and I am kind of losing a lot of value in him. So we might do that shift next week, maybe a week after that. Let's see what happens there. But I think I'm pretty much happy with the team right now. Now, in terms of our transfer strategy, guys, we're not making any transfers this week. I think the team is pretty good, pretty set to go for game week five. We will get one more week of information. We'll understand what is the rotation pattern, if there's any. And I think we can have those two free transfers for game week six, where we can make much more informed and better FPL decisions, guys. I think those two free transfers would be crucial for game week six. And I'm saving one this week. Now, coming to the best captaincy options, guys, I know a lot of people would be kind of put off by Mo Salah, but I think Mo Salah against Newcastle, even if it's Newcastle, which is a stronger defence, I think it's a great option to go for. Newcastle have shown that they have cracks in their midfield, cracks in the defence, and they can concede chances. So, if you are clinical, if Liverpool would be informed that day, I think there are chances of getting a couple of goals. And Salah, I think, should, should be involved in getting those goals, guys. It was very, very unlucky, as I mentioned earlier. Of course, you can even go for an Erling Haaland, guys. He is playing Nottingham Forest, who are conceding chances left, right and centre. But the only big question that, you know, you, you might have or which might not be very favourable in Haaland's case here, I think, is the minutes risk because it's a midweek fixture. We know that Haaland has a habit or has a knack of picking up knocks and injuries. And he generally doesn't play 90 minutes week in, week out, as we've already seen in the Premier League. So there is a chance that he might get rested because we also have a weekend game. And then we have the Champions League game, which I think is pretty much going to start. So there are chances that he might get rested. Pep has already mentioned that, you know, there are or there will be moments where Haaland won't play. And because he has a, a Alvarez in the team to kind of take his place from the bench. So there are chances. There's a risk involved. If you want to go a bit risky, but if you are targeted on a fixture, I think... He's the option to go for. I still feel Salah is a lot safer and I think he'll probably do well against Newcastle. If you want to do things a bit differently, I think Gabriel Jesus is also a great option to go for. Villa haven't really inspired a lot of confidence in defence, guys. And there is possible haul or there might be a possible haul in there. He was also a bit unlucky along with the Martinelli in the last game to not get any FPL points or majority FPL points. But I think there is a chance that, you know, he can score against Villa and get a good FPL haul. Harry Kane has been in great form. We saw him against Nottingham Forest. He could have got a hat-trick. He missed that penalty. But, I mean, there are goals in him. We've, we've seen that already. He looks like the best Tottenham attacker to go for, guys. And this is also kind of coming from the fact that Son has been in very bad form or he's, he's been totally out of form. So, I think Harry Kane is going to take that mantle. I think he's going to take that ownership. And I think if you want to go a bit different, Harry Kane is also a good option to go for. It's West Ham, so I understand if you would be a little bit sceptical of not captaining him because West Ham are still a decent defence. Yes, they've, they've not really kept it very tight. They've kind of struggled in defence, but a lot of new signings have come in. They will probably take a little bit more time to get settled. But I think Harry Kane in that form can absolutely score against West Ham, guys. So if you want to do things differently, I think it's Harry Kane. I think my overall ranking would be Salah as my number one option then Erling Haaland, then going for Jesus, and then fourth probably would be Harry Kane in terms of captaincy options this week. So that'll be it for my side for this video, guys. I know this video is probably a slightly longer one, but there was a lot to cover. In fact, the whole game week to cover in this video, guys. So hit like, hit subscribe if you enjoy the video today. Make sure that you check out our other FPL content. We'll also be doing another video tomorrow, which will be kind of covering the game week five top dilemmas guys we'll be answering all those dilemmas there'll be some final tips and tricks in that video as well so make sure you check that out then we'll also return for the deadline stream so if you have any more questions or if you want to discuss about your team have any transfer dilemmas maybe any captaincy issues make sure that you join us for the deadline stream as well thank you so much for watching guys and i'll see you in the next one